hey, hey, it is Adrian Lawrence once again filling in for Dr. Richie and this is TYT's Indisputable. I'm excited to share a lot of good stories with you today and to share with you the wisdom that is Jackson White. Thanks for joining us, Jackson. Thanks for me. Thanks for having me. It's always good to be here. And this is the first time I've done it with you. So I'm looking I forward to agree. that. I think, yeah, I think it's gonna be good. I'm looking forward to it. Yeah, we're generally holding down Rebel HQ. So uh, it's nice for us to be on this platform together. Yeah, definitely. All right, well, let's go ahead and get this thing started. We are gonna kick it off with a story of the Marjorie Taylor Green Grinch. You know, this holiday, the representative gifted us more ethnocentric ignorance. The congresswoman from Georgia got big mad about Republicans acknowledging Kwanzaa, and she condemned it as millions were beginning to celebrate this week long holiday. Let me show you what she did. So the College Republicans, that's a national org of conservative college students, they sent a simple tweet saying happy Kwanzaa. And Green responds with stop. It's a fake religion creating, created by a psychopath. You aren't bringing in new voters, you are turning them away. People are tired of pandering and BS. Oh, oh, you know, the Grinch that is green, always fun. And what's also fun is when you actually do your research and you will figure out and realize that Kwanzaa is not a religion. But Green didn't bother even looking that up. But let's talk a little bit about what Kwanzaa is. Here's the background on it. So it was introduced by Professor Mulana Karenge in 1966. Kwanzaa's is an annual week long celebration in which African American families give gifts, eat traditional meals and light candles in honor of their ancestors. It's based on African first harvest celebrations organized around five fundamental kinds of activities. In gathering of the people's special reverence for the creator and creation, commemoration of the past, recommitment to the highest cultural values and celebration of the good. That's what Karenga said and now serves as the executive director of the African American Cultural Center in Los Angeles. That's what it notes on his website. Now Green in her you know, unhinged post, she, she referenced a psychopath. That's who she was talking about there, uh, Karenga. So uh, this is what we found out per the, to the, per the Huffington Post. Green's allusion to Karenga's past, however, appears to be a reference to his 1971 conviction on charges of assault and false imprisonment, calling himself a political prisoner. Karenga was released four years later and has long denied the charges. And so calling him a psychopath simply because she doesn't understand the background that is Kwanzaa or the fact that it's not even a religion is just nonsensical. But one thing we do know is that other Republicans and Republicans in general have uplifted Kwanzaa many times. For example, 2017, President Donald Trump issued a statement saying, let us celebrate during this joyous time the richness of the past and look with hope toward a brighter future. In 2013, the Republican National Committee also wished people a happy Kwanzaa, which is just a basic decent thing to do. But apparently Green has issues with it. Jackson, what are your thoughts? So my biggest, my initial thoughts is the irony of how she's saying that this is pandering. When actually she's pandering to her racist base. As the Republican Party has been doing, as we know with things like welfare queens, as they've done with anything that they possibly can to weaken the social safety and overall through that influence. As Marjorie Taylor Greene says, it was started by a psychopath because he got to a fight. How many people have gotten in fights in their lives? How many people have done this and that to make ends meet? Does that make them psychopaths? No. And then fake religion, obviously it's not actually a religion, but what religion's real? Your religion, Christianity, which version of Christianity is real? Is it Baptist, is it Pentecostal, is it all these different denominations? And what about the psychopathic history just within the last 500 years that the European churches have done all over the planet through the name of Jesus to conquer peoples and overall just make money and really just use religion as a scapegoat so that they can get people on their side to do what they do. So it's ridiculous from top to bottom, but again, she's pandering. That's what she's doing because she knows that a certain sect of the Republican base is gonna love to hear like, ah, those black people, ah. That's all this is. So you know, I love how you go into the fact that she's pandering to her base, and then you just straight sweep the leg as it concerns religion. In terms of like, hey, yo, well, whose story, whose you know, um, whose little tale or what they follow or what they believe is really real? And it's just, it's so incredible how people will often say that these things, like religion, needs to be protected, but it has to be my religion. Exactly, because all the other religions, that means we get to disrespect them, you know, persecute them, make them the enemy. That's all it is. And as we know, Mark, luckily she has no real committee assignments. But unfortunately, 
she's a very big rally to the base to get out and vote. So absolutely, you know, the fact that she didn't have committee assignments because they were stripped from her. It's like she has <laughs> less work to do, gets the same pay as I've said before. But yeah. less work to do and more free time on our hands to post these shenanigan tweets during the holidays, which is not something we need. Uh, but I think we can all kind of also see that this was largely an attack on a, um, a tradition and a culture aspect of black culture. And so, you know, it just, it really shows who Marjorie Taylor Greene is. But we've also seen her engage in plenty of anti Semitism and um, all sorts of things that really aren't or shouldn't be reflective of. Uh, the United States and being a progressive society. Absolutely. Yeah, that's what that is. Let's go ahead and stick with the holidays. And this is more of a Christmas gift from, I think it'd be a literal Karen in this case. It is causing an uproar on social media right now with folks that are really debating whether a gift given by this woman was a microaggression or a kind gesture. So here are the deets so you can decide. What we have is a white man who posted a picture of Tahitian pearls online that his grandmother gave to his wife. His wife happens to be black. So this is what the caption of the husband's Reddit post said. Xmas present from my very Karen grandma to my African American wife. He punctuated the heading with a white embarrassment emoji and the grandma's card to the black granddaughter in law read, like my black pearls, rare and of great value. You are the black pearls of the family, smiley face. Love you, Karen. Oh, and that nice. Now, of course, per the Atlantic Star, Atlantic Black Star, uh, the public thrashing, it really started pretty soon. Uh, it said that the almost 4,300 comments have been made since the Christmas post went up and most commenting didn't see a problem with the present. A few people said generationally and culturally her remarks reflected someone trying their best to rise above white privilege. Others even blasted the man for including the palm hand in the note suggesting he was embarrassed by her. Jackson, how does this hit you? Uh, honestly, for me, this is just kind of an incident of like a white woman showing that she's white. I don't really think she meant harm on her granddaughter per se. And I don't think that obviously it was meant to blow up this big online. But you know, I'm I'm half black, half white, and I grew up pretty much primarily only in a black world. And so like sometimes when I'm around white family members, they'll say things like this, but there's no real malintent behind it. They just they're just kind of trying to relate or be funny in a way. So you know, like I think this is an incident where it kind of blew up really big and it kind of shows a spotlight that white people live in their own world for the most part. But I don't think, I personally don't feel like she meant harm by doing this. I think she was just old and white. <laughs> no, no, I, I definitely agree with you. I don't think she meant harm in any way. But we do have to realize that, you know, if there was harm done, uh, if for some reason it made the wife feel even more uncomfortable, uh, you know, the impact is what we have to focus on rather than yeah. the intent. Uh, that being said, I do think this is kind of funny. Um, yeah. Just, you know, it is because it is. It's, <laughs> it's someone who probably tried their best and thought it was a sweet gesture. And, you know, they're out looking at jewelry and they're like, hmm, I see. Pearls, and, but uh, is that black pearls? Oh, I think she'd like these so much better because she's black. Like, come on, <laughs> yeah. you're, thinking this, you're just like, <laughs> what is going on here? Uh, but here's, uh, let's let's talk about what some of the posters said because they did kind kind of get funny. So, Gas Grouchy commented, "I think acknowledging the fact she is black and could feel left out, but." that she is beautiful and rare in her own regard and loved by the family is completely sweet. I think the cringe card was actually perfectly delivered and genuine. One big tobacco wrote, bless her heart, grandma's trying. The delivery needs a little work, but she is trying. <laughs> and you know what, I, I agree, people try and especially, and I don't wanna give anybody a pass just because of their age, but generally it, it bothers me far, far less if the person has more mileage, uh, cause times have changed, you know, what, 50 years ago, six years ago, you could call me colored girl and no one would bat an eye, you call me that today and it's like, good luck to you. But. Um, <laughs> I will tell you, I definitely will tell you uh, with this gift, like, 
okay, so this is a piece of jewelry and it can be pretty expensive. So if grandma wants to buy me a black diamond, I will take it. I will right. take any <laughs> stone, any kind of gem. If there are black Benjamins out there, a black Bentley, whatever she needs me to take to embrace my blackness, I'll take it. Right, exactly, especially if it's for free, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? How can you go wrong with that? But yeah, out of the many stories that you know we typically cover on Indisputable, I think this is one of the more light and funny ones, you know, so. Yeah, it, I definitely uh, yeah. agree. <laughs> oh my gosh, so let's look. Uh, so in terms of the quality of the gift itself. So according to the retailer Pearl Lang, black pearls are called Tahitian pearls and they come from French Polynesia, Fiji and Sea of the Sea of Cortez and the Cook Islands. These specific pearls are considered the most exotic variety of pearls in the market with the most high quality batch of them going from a thousand to thirty six thousand dollars. Yeah, yeah, so if anybody <laughs> Me to buy black pearls or wants to buy me black pearls, white pearls. I'll take any kind of pearls. Just it's okay. You can pass them along to me. Right. You can pass me the black pearls or you can pass me the integration pearls, whichever you <laughs> want. I'll take them. <laughs> That's right. Yes. Yes. That I think it's extremely important that people just give us gifts. Like if you want to give me jewelry as reparations, I'll take it any color. Right. Right, yeah. I ain't gonna say no. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, quickly before we go to break, did you get anything good for the holidays? Yes, I got this new laptop that I'm on because right before I went home, it, my old one crashed and that's a problem. So I got this no, new laptop that's working well and um, I got to see my family, which was even better because I actually hadn't been home in several years. So that was great. I got some new nieces, so I hung out with them. So I think that's what I enjoyed the most. All right then, well that is a good thing indeed. And we will see you all back very shortly, stick and stay. Hey, it's Adrian Lawrence, thank you for joining us again. TYT's Indisputable filling in for Dr. Richie. And we appreciate you joining us as well as being members. And your membership, it helps keep TYT sustainable and empowers us to fight for positive change in this world. So by becoming a TYT member, you'll be part of a change machine that won't stop until we have a world that's better for ourselves and future generations. So we encourage you to join the fight at tyt.com change. Also, something good coming up tonight. We know that 2021 has been a year that promised to be better than the last, but really was it? You know, I say no, but whatever. But you can take a progressive look back at the year and join Jank, John, Dr. Rashad Ritchie and Senator Nina Turner as they crown the ultimate Turk and jerk of the year. We want to know who you think the Turk and jerk is. So go to tyt.com slash polls and put in your vote. And then tune in tonight, December 29th, 8 Eastern, 6 Pacific at tyt.com slash live or on YouTube. Also, there are sales going on and they are on sale right now, everything at the TYT shop. Don't miss out on shop TYT's last sale of the year with 25% off site wide, that's huge. And I will have to drop the fact that my book staying in the game, what, two, three time award winner right behind me. Well, yeah, that's on the shop too. So hook yourself up 25% off site wide. Celebrate the new year with some indisputable merchandise as well at shoptyt.com. And also coming up later today, you're gonna watch a conversation live at 5.30 Eastern, 2 p.m. Pacific at tyt.com live before the Young Turks. And let's hear from what our TYT members had to say. So. We have Rebel Jagan saying Jackson White, Nature, and Lawrence. What a Wednesday treat. Loving the matching dreads. For real. I can Right, do. right. Look at that. It just happened. This. It just happened to work out just like that. It's a beautiful <laughs> thing. I dig it. And Mickey C, the silver haired dragon, said, Love Jackson. If only I were 50 years younger. Woo, Jackson. I'm gonna have to make a time machine for you. Oh, nope. <laughs> hey. Looks like you got options, saying? Mickey C. Hey, hey. <laughs> also, uh, regarding Kwanzaa, I am Sock says she's moving down the list of holidays to have a war on. First Christmas, now Kwanzaa, next New Year's, MLK, Valentine's. Yeah, Marjorie Taylor Greene, piece of work, piece <laughs> of work. And we got at the YouTube super chat, $5 for, for Bazilla. Thank you, thank you. Why can't we say happy Hanukkah when it's Hanukkah? 
Merry Christmas for Christmas and happy Kwanzaa when it's Kwanzaa. Don't get me started. I, there, there's no reason we can't. It's just some people don't want to acknowledge other cultures, other belief structures, other celebrations. They're just haters. Nonsense. On Twitch, we have River and Ravens about the Black Pearl said, well intended, just real cringe. Yeah, they are cringe, but I'm gonna cringe my way to the bank with anything nice I'm given. <laughs> I don't care, I will take it, but yeah, I feel you. And also, we're working on our Twitter situation, but there's a reminder, you can tweet at Indisputable TYT and tag hashtag Indisputable so we can read your comments live on air. And we have some great comments for you, and I know you are going to have some comments on this, Karen. You want to call the police on them for having a barbecue on a and Sunday? You're going to feel free! Back off! I'm going to tell them there's an African American man threatening my life. Say that. Ma'am, no, no weapons on you or anything like that? No, here. No, no, that's okay. Stand up for me, please. No. I just make sure you have any weapons on you. Like, I don't want to turn around. I don't want to touch you. I don't need a pocket. Okay. Right. Under arrest for battery. I didn't do any battery. No, when you spit on people, that's I battery. No, I did not. Listen, he verbally abused uh, me. Well, that doesn't give you the right to spit on him. <laughs> that's what you verbally abused me as soon as I got here. Did I spit on you? No. You're in arrest for battery. Do no, yep, yeah, definitely doing that. that. Hurts. Yeah, they're handcuffs. They're not for comfort. Can Let's I go. take my purse? Absolutely. Come on. Oh, Let's please go. don't. No, oh, don't no, you're hurt definitely me, going to jail. Let's go. Walk. Unbelievable. Mm -hmm. I, can I leave my car here? I, that's absolutely fine, sure. Mm -hmm. Yeah, this is unbelievable. Yep. Unbelievable. Officer, this oh. is unbelievable. Let's go. Unbelievable. Unbelievable. Well, I'll get a good attorney. God bless you. Yep. God bless me. God, because I'm a Christian. I, Christians don't talk like you. No, but you know what? No. I just went through. Can I put okay. that in my purse? Please? I need to collect your property. You are a prisoner now. I need to collect your belongings. I've never been a prisoner. Well, you are tonight. Please, please no, don't. No, you're going to jail. Please don't. Open please. your hand. What is this? It's my Kleenex. Okay, it's so let it go. Well, can you give me a Kleenex? Confirm please, for please me don't or. Please do this. Please. I didn't do anything. How about you just stand there and stop talking? How about we do that? How about we do that? That doesn't give you an excuse to act the way that you're acting. Not just stop talking. This officer saw me last night. I've been having a lot happening in my life. Really? That's going to happen? I'm sorry. 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 i Oh, that hurts. You're hurting my hands. Well, they're handcuffs. Okay. They're not for comfort. Well, I've never had handcuffs. So that's a no. Okay. Ooh, that was definitely a Karen in full effect, starting with spitting on people and then hitting the I'm not racist, I have Muslim friends. Uh, Jackson, I'll let you go ahead and share your thoughts. So the first thing that comes to mind is people don't want to go to jail, which means that when they do things that they're not supposed to do, they typically have a way out or a way to get away with it. So this woman thought that spitting on these people, she was gonna walk away from it. She thought that she was just gonna get out, which obviously shows the privilege. But again, I mean, I talk about this with Dr. Ritchie all the time. People do stuff, you don't know what people will do to you. If you just walk up in their face yelling at them, screaming at them and spitting on somebody, somebody might pull out a knife and cut you. Somebody might pull out a gun and shoot you or just beat you up really bad first and foremost. And then it was funny, obviously, seeing her, you know, begging and acting like, you know, I've never been in jail and stuff. It's like, yeah, well, that's nice. And she was saying all that because she knew she didn't have an argument. She just felt stupid. But she didn't think about any of these things because she really thought that she was going to be able to spit on people and just walk free. Mm -hmm. And you know what? That really does showcase some kind of sense of privilege, like this audacity to think that you can just spit on someone and you know, and not face any consequences. And a lot of people out there don't realize that spitting on someone is a battery. That's a, an assault. That is you making contact with someone else in an offensive way, even if it's just your saliva. And as we know, spitting on someone is probably one of the worst things you could do to them in terms of insulting them. And so this woman here trying to pull out the I'm a Christian, never been in trouble before, she was really trying to grab Grab every sympathy card possible when she just should have acted right from the jump. Because Jesus went around spitting on people, of course. That, mm -hmm. That's what he did. He spit on the lepers and he spit on the poor.
Mm-hmm. But, you know, again, it's just like you said, spitting on someone might be the most disrespectful thing you can do to them. And, you know, even if the police didn't get involved, let's say she just got hit, she would have been saying the same stuff. You know, poor me. I, I don't deserve this. Why are you attacking me? They're hitting me if the police showed up. So, you know, it's good that she got in trouble for it because more people need to get in trouble for things like this because it's not OK to go around harassing people because you don't want to wear a mask or some other trivial matter. Yep, and you know, and her being arrested and probably being taken to jail. I hope her one Muslim friend can come pick her up because (laughs) that was all sorts of nonsense. We are going to move from arrest to incarceration to a story that comes out of New Jersey. So this one comes to us from the Essex County Correctional Facility, where a 22 year old man who was suffering from schizophrenia was beaten by several inmates, about seven, and nothing was done. Now, this individual, he was left in a coma for about over two months. Why don't we put up a picture of him? This young man here, this is Jashawn Boyd. 22 years old, schizophrenic, he was in the Essex County Correctional Facility after minor offenses, two minor, minor offenses. And he's in the facility and he is beat up. And while we talk about this issue, one thing we do know is that it was all captured on video. So there should be no dispute whatsoever. But before we show you the footage, which can be very jarring, what I wanna do is essentially describe this attack to you based on how it was documented, at least by the New York Times. So what they said is that in surveillance video of the assault that was shared last month on social media, seven men in a jail day room are shown knocking Mr. Boyd to the floor and stomping his head. One by one, they return to pummel him with their fists, a microwave, a water cooler, a broom, and an industrial bucket filled with bleach during an attack that continues well after Mr. Boyd appears to lose consciousness. That is a harrowing, harrowing incident, an assault upon this 22 year old schizophrenic man. And we're gonna show you the footage now, but please remember that this is very disturbing. It also does not come with audio, here it is. They used a microwave, a broom, bucket full of bleach. They were attacking this man in a ruthless, ruthless way and he was unable to defend himself. His injuries were incredibly severe. Let me go ahead and tell you what we know about them per the New York Times. Severe brain injury has left him unable to walk or eat solid food on his own, his mother said, and has damaged his short term memory. Each of the men, in the video has been charged with attempted murder. The beating, which is under investigation by county prosecutors, lasted at least two minutes and 11 seconds without any intervention by guards. 
That's according to a copy of the footage that was obtained by the New York Times. Jackson, your thoughts? So I think that I really want to focus on just the culture of imprisonment and punishment that we have and how the prison system itself makes society worse. And how it really just taps into our more primal and arcane nature to kind of shun those out of the tribe who we deem to be dangerous. But the difference between now and 100,000 years ago is we understand things like psychology, we understand nature versus nurture, we understand how our environments really impact the way we live our lives. And so these prison systems that do nothing about rehabilitation, they don't really look at the core root of people's issues types of homes they grew up in, the types of economic backgrounds they come from, the types of gang related activity that they come around in. Those root issues are not really focused on. Instead, it's punish, punish, punish. We know that we have more prisoners in America than any other country. We know about our arcane drug sentencing laws. We know all about this and we know that a very small group of people make money from it. But literally the prison system in and of itself that has these types of environments where people are basically just caged animals, you can't come out and do better. You have no opportunities when you come out, and so you just end up right back in. And so a lot of those people that we saw beating on that young man likely were in in and out of in and out of juvenile, in and out of prison throughout most of their lives. Now maybe that's not the case, but that's really a lot of what we see for people who end up in prison because that's the environment that they're in. And overall, society just really doesn't care. So it's it's sad to see, but that environment just breeds more of itself and it replicates itself in the streets. So, uh, you know, and I think that that, that is definitely um, that is a thought and that is an issue without question, whether it's recidivism or the lack of rehabilitation, where we're just focusing on essentially uh, more of a penal punishment system. But uh, in terms of this issue here with Boyd, this is a problem. What those men did was uh, it. It was absolutely unacceptable. There is no reason or way that you should have seven people pummeling on one individual who is obviously suffering from mental health issues. He has serious mental health issues. You can see it on his face and with his body. So they knew he was different and whatever he may have done to upset one of them, it did not justify in any way for them to do what they did. The fact that they were using a microwave to bash him, they were stomping him out, throwing bleach on him. That is disgusting and it is warranting attempted murder charges because that is clearly what they were trying to do. And when it comes to mental health, what we have to remember is that Boyd is one of the 10 to near 25% of inmates, incarcerated people who suffer from serious mental illness who are at the facility. And these facilities are not equipped to support their needs. They are struggling and without having the proper supervision, you have situations like this where you have more predatory behavior going on that hurts these people who are already very vulnerable. And so what we found out at least from the times about the problems here is that last year after being arrested on charges that stemmed from incidents with his family at their home, this is Boyd in Elizabeth, New Jersey. Boyd was transferred from the Essex County Jail to a psychiatric hospital and later released. He was set to plead guilty to the charges, which were just criminal mischief and unlawful possession of a knife. But he missed the sentencing, which is often the case with people with mental health. But anyways, it led to a warrant for his arrest. When he turned himself in, he was sent back to jail and placed in a traditional housing unit. A decision his lawyer and parents questioned given his mental health history. Indeed, that is a question of why did they put him in the general population with everyone else if he clearly has mental health issues. He is a vulnerable individual. He does not need to be around others who could potentially just like they did here, prey on him. But what we also need to talk about is the fact that there has been an uptick in violence, particularly in these East Coast, New York, New Jersey facilities recently. And it's extremely problematic. I know a lot of us have talked about the overcrowding, the um, the essentially lack of supervision with guards not necessarily showing up for work. Uh, also the conditions that are poor based on COVID-19 and this pandemic and its impact. And the reality is that people People are dying. Uh, the Times had also noted that another spasm of violence came on December 3rd when Dan Milford Gellin, 27 year old, died after being stabbed by another detainee at this facility. 
Now, a fellow prisoner has been charged with murder in the county prosecutor's office and the state attorney general are currently investigating his death. Let's go ahead and put up a picture of Mr. Gellin. This 27 year old man was murdered in this Essex County Correctional Facility. We have seen this increase of violence. It is due to overcrowding and the fact is there's a lack of accountability. We also know that paramedics of emergency or emergency medical techs were called to the jail 169 times between January and June to treat either officers or detainees. That is up from 99 times during the same period last year. And that's according to documents released by the union, the Fraternal Order of Police Lodge 106. Violence and resignations have also increased in state prisons according to William Sullivan, that's a president of a separate union that represents about 6,000 New Jersey correction officers and the Police Benevolent Association Local 105. About 450 officers resign each year, Sullivan said, and the pipeline for training new guards has slowed drastically. There is a problem, not just by way of having these inmates essentially who are vulnerable put in positions where they can be preyed upon and hurt as Mr. Boyd was. But also the fact that we don't have supervision. We don't have the safety protocols, things in place to ensure that we are properly monitoring and watching over inmates who need our help because they cannot be left on their own. Jackson. Yeah, I agree 100%. Uh, you know, the fact that he was in this facility in general population didn't make sense, but you know, it goes to show a lot. If you don't have money, it's really every man for himself. And you know, prosecutors and just the way that our law system works, it's about getting them in. You know, get the charges, get them in that cell. Once you do, who cares? You know, you don't have the money to really get the best lawyer. This is the type of stuff that you look at. And overall, society just does not care about these people because they're not white. They don't have money and who cares if they have mental health issues. They have some type of a record and that's good enough. So ultimately, I think that, you know, unfortunately, this is an issue that's going to take decades to fix because we have so many problems at the same time. But what happened to him was totally wrong. And the fact that they just let it, you know, just for minutes and minutes, all those weapons that were used against him, you know, what were they doing besides just watching it happen? Yeah, seriously, you know, I do definitely think that the men who attacked Mr. Boyd, they do need to face attempted murder charges. Yeah. But I also think that the guards who stood idly by and did not a damn thing as Mr. Boyd was pummeled nearly to death, that they also need to face some kind of charges because you have a duty to protect people, to monitor people, to intervene. And the fact that you do nothing, especially with a vulnerable member of society who doesn't have the wherewithal to actually maybe interact with society in a way that's not necessarily going to cause issues or tension, you need to protect them. And the fact is Boyd wasn't protected and that means we got a problem. But we also do definitely have more stories for you. We will be back very shortly, stick and stay. You're back with Indisputable and Adrian Lawrence. And what are you doing tonight? I'd like to hope that it is watching Turks and Jerks. That's a progressive look back at the year. I want you to join Jenk Uger, John Iderola, Dr. Rashad Ritchie, and Senator Nina Turner as they crown the ultimate Turk and Jerk of the Year. If you do want to vote on who you think should be the Turk and Jerk of the Year, well, I want you to go to tyt.com slash polls and vote. You can tune in tonight, December 29th at 8 p.m. Eastern, 6 p.m. Pacific on tyt.com slash live or YouTube. Let's see what the members have to say. So, hey, we have spitting Karen. Now, we were talking about her and V says that spitting on someone during this age of Corona takes it to a whole different level. She is lucky she didn't get charged with biological terrorism. That's right, because who knows? She could have had halitosis, been burning holes in walls, I don't know. <laughs> um, Occam's taser said, I forgot my funny handcuffs in the squad vehicle. My fuzzy handcuffs, excuse me. Yeah, I think she wanted something a little more comfortable because apparently that's what happens when you're arrested. Well. I guess some people do get that comfort treatment. Mickey C, the silver haired dragon said, I'm a Christian. No matter how I search, I can't find where her Jesus said, thou shalt spew hateful epithets and spit on others. Yeah, totally agree. About the man attacked in prison, Mr. Boyd, just another radical said that camera is being controlled by a live guard while the attack is going on. 
That's a hell of a thing. Mickey C, the silver haired dragon said our government care about mental health care for people on the outside. Why would they care about the people who they have thrown away into prisons and forgotten about them? That is a damn good question. The YouTube super chat about the black pearl gift. Trudy Lawrence, no relation to my knowledge, gave us a good 20 bucks, thank you. And grandma was being sweet. Remember, colored was the preferred in the 50s and 60s. Yep, that's right, grandma gets a pass for age and time. I ask all of us to have charity if folks are trying to get education and be inclusive. All right, so as far as Kevin Spitz, Kev Z, or excuse me, Karen Spitz, Kev Z, $10, thank you. Says Karen Playbook, step one, it's my rights. Step two, I'm a Christian. Step three, cry. Step four, point to none, non-existent friend of color. And step, I'm guessing five, still doesn't work, go to jail. <laughs> yep, that's what happened to her. Zoinks from space 333 with a $5, thank you. Says at Jackson, Jesus got that miracle spit. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, she do, that's it. That's all it was, she got that holy water. <laughs> oh my God, ooh Lord. <laughs> as far as the man attacked in prison, Mr. Boyd, Andrea Larson, $10, thank you. Said my oldest son just turned 22. The fear that young man must have had is heartbreaking. I pray for his family while they'll never have true justice. Their son is gone. Um, I hope one day they find peace. Fortunately, he did not die. Um, he is making his way to recovery, uh, even though I don't know if recovery will be complete for Mr. Boyd at all. But hopefully there will be some semblance of justice. As far as the spitting Karen goes on Twitch, Natura, Natura the guy says, uh, spit is a gunshot in 2021. I don't know, I'd rather be spit on than shot, but uh, still it's a problem in 2021. That's for sure with this pandemic still raging. Uh, as far as a man attacked in prison, Jax Drax says, once placed in the system, they are no longer treated or as or considered people. It's disgusting. Yeah, just as Jackson was saying. And then Venomenon or Venom Menon says, thank you, Adrian. Always speaking up for us fellow neurodivergent folk and bringing that perspective. You're welcome. I do my best for sure. Oh, this world needs to take more of us into account. But we are going to go ahead and talk about an accounting that probably should have happened down in Dallas. So Dallas detectives, what they did is they seized more more than a hundred thousand dollars from a woman's suitcase at the Dallas Love Field Airport. However, Dallas police, they didn't charge the woman, still haven't charged her, but they took her cash. So here's the background on this. The detectives say that they smelled a drug odor before they searched the woman's luggage without her permission, but did not arrest her and haven't charged her with a crime. A police canine alerted the two detectives with the Dallas Police Department to a black check suitcase secured by a lock. The dog named Ballantyne is trained to pick up the scent of cocaine, heroin, marijuana, and methamphetamines. That's according to the report. What the detectives found was a shipping bag that was wrapped in blankets containing $100, $50, $20, $10, $5, $10, $20, $50, $50, $50, $50, $50, $50, $50, $50, $50, $50, $50, $50, $50, $50, $50, $50, $50, $50, $50, $50, $50, $50, $50, $50, $50, $50, $50, $50, $50, $50, $50, $50, $50, $50, $50, $50, $50, $50, $50, $50, $50, $50, $50, $50, $50, $50, $50, $50, $50, $50, $50, $50, $50, $50, $50, $50, $50, $50, $50, $50, $50, $50, $50, $50, $50, $50, $50, $50, $50, $50, $50, $50, $50, $50, $50, $50, $50, $50, $50, $50, $50, $50, $50, $50, $50, $50, $50, $50, $50, $50, $50, $50, $50, $50, $50, $50, $50, $50, $50, $50, $50, $50, $50, $50, $50, $50, $50, $50, $50, $50, $50, $50, $50, $50, $50, $50, $50, $50, $50, $50, $50, $50, $50, $50, $50, $50, $50, $50, $50, $50, $50, $50, $50, $50, $50, $50, $50, $50, $50, $50, $50, $50, $50, $50, $50, $50, $50, $50, $50, $50, $50, $50, $50, $50, $50, $50, $50, $50, $50, $50, $50, $50, $50, $50, $50, $50, $50, $50, $50, $50, $50, $50, $50, $50, $50, $50, $50, $50, $50, $50, $50, $50, $50, $50, $50, $50, $50, $50, $50, $50, $50, $50, $50, $50, $50, $50, $50, $50, $50, $50, $50, $50, $50, $50, $50, $50, $50, $50, $50, $50, $50, $50, $50, $50, $50, $50, $50, $50, $50, $50, $50, $50, $50, $50, $50, $50, $50, $50, $50, $50, $50, $50, $50, $50, $50, $50, $50, $50, $50, $50, $50, $50, $50, $50, $50, $50, $50, $50, $50, $50, $50, $50, $50, $50, $50, $50, $50, $50, $50, $50, $50, $50, $50, $50, $50, $50, $50, $50, $50, $50, $50, $50, $50, $50, $50, $50, $50, $50, $50, $50, $50, $50, $50, $50, $50, $50, $50, $50, $50, $50, $50, $50, $50, $50, $50, $50, $50, $50, $50, $50, $50, $50, $50, $50, $50, $50, $50, $50, $50, $50, $50, $50, $50, $50, $50, $50, $50, $50, $50, $50, $50, $50, $50, $50, $50, $50, $50, $50, $50, $50, $50, $50, $50, $50, $50, $50, $50, $50, $50, $50, $50, $50, $50, $50, $50, $50, $50, $50, $50, $50, $50, $50, $50, $50, $50, $50, $50, $50, $50, $50, $50, $50, $50, $50, $50, $50, $50, $50, $50, $50, $50, $50, $50, $50, $50, $50, $50, $50, $50, $50, $50, $50, $50, $50, $50, $50, $50, $50, $50, $50, $50, $50, $50, $50, $50, $50, $50, $50, $50, $50, $50, $50, $50, $50, $50, $50, $50, $50, $50, $50, $50, $50, $50, $50, $50, $50, $50, $50, $50, $50, $50, $50, $50, $50, $50, $50, $50, $50, $50, $50, $50, $50, $50, $50, $50, $50, $50, $50, $50, $50, $50, $50, $50, $50, $50, $50, $50, $50, $50, $50, $50, $50, $50, $50, $50, $50, $50, $50, $50, $50, $50, $50, $50, $50, $50, $50, $50, $50, $50, $50, $50, $50, $50, $50, $50, $50, $50, $50, $50, $50, $50, $50, $50, $50, $50, $50, $50, $50, $50, $50, $50, $50, $50, $50, $50, $50, $50, $50, $50, $50, $50, $50, $50, $50, $50, $50, $50, $50, $50, $50, $50, $50, $50, $50, $50, $50, $50, $50, $50, $50, $50, $50, $50, $50, $50, $50, $50, $50, $50, $50, $50, $50, $50, $50, $50, $50, $50, $50, $50, $50, $50, $50, $50, $50, $50, $50, $50, $50, $50, $50, $50, $50, $50, $50, $50, $50, $50, $50, $50, $50, $50, $50, $50, $50, $50, $50, $50, $50, $50, $50, $50, $50, $50, $50, $50, $50, $50, $50, $50, $50, $50, $50, $50, $50, $50, $50, $50, $50, $50, $50, $50, $50, $50, $50, $50, $50, $50, $50, $50, $50, $50, $50, $50, $50, $50, $50, $50, $50, $50, $50, $50, $50, $50, $50, $50, $50, $50, $50, $50, $50, $50, $50, $50, $50, $50, $50, $50, $50, $50, $50, $50, $50, $50, $50, $50, $50, $50, $50, $50, $50, $50, $50, $50, $50, $50, $50, $50, $50, $50, $50, $50, $50, $50, $50, $50, $50, $50, $50, $50, $50, $50, $50, $50, $50, $50, $50, $50, $50, $50, $50, $50, $50, $50, $50, $50, $50, $50, $50, $50, $50, $50, $50, $50, $50, $50, $50, $50, $50, $50, $50, $50, $50, $50, $50, $50, $50, $50, $50, $50, $50, $50, $50, $50, $50, $50, $50, $50, $50, $50, $50, $50, $50, $50, $50, $50, $50, $50, $50, $50, $50, $50, $50, $50, $50, $50, $50, $50, $50, $50, $50, $50, $50, $50, $50, $50, $50, $50, $50, $50, $50, $50, $50, $50, $50, $50, $50, $50, $50, $50, $50, $50, $50, $50, $50, $50, $50, $50, $50, $50, $50, $50, $50, $50, $50, $50, $50, $
But of course, they're not taking the money for, you know, to enhance society in any type of way. They're taking the money and the assets because it gives them money and assets. <laughs> so I think that's actually an interesting idea to push. I mean, if y'all gonna take all this money from people, you might as well reinvest it into the community or something. No, yeah, you definitely think that's the case. But you know, you're right, as you bring up with civil asset forfeiture, you know, having these laws where the police can seize, uh, they can keep your property, end up selling it or whatnot, as long as they think it's involved in a crime. And you know, the person ends up having to go to court in order to fight to get it back. And when it comes to TSA or Dallas police, the thought is that if you have a substantial amount of cash on you, it's kind of this automatic presumption that it is suspicious in some way. And thus they ultimately end up maybe having probable cause and thinking that it's connected to a drug deal or some kind of crime in some way. And thus they are empowered to seize it. In this situation here, it appears that the woman explained, hey, I've got all these dollars because I am a dancer. That's right, she claims that she's a dancer. She also happens to work in real estate and she obtained the cash through the sale of a house. Now, the, according to the Atlanta Black Star, the Dallas PD celebrated the seizure on social media. A post to the department's Facebook page showed Valentine posing behind the cash. We need to get him some treats. Canine officer Valentine does it again. On 12-2-21, the Love Field Interdiction Squad seized over $100,000 with the help of Ballantyne. Good job, Ballantyne, the caption read. Look at the picture of Ballantyne, as you can imagine. Ballantyne, Ballantyne's a good boy. Ballantyne always been a good boy, but he's just being directed by some shady people as far as I'm concerned, taking people's money without having good reason. All right, he's just making his handlers happy. That's all he's doing. Yeah, and again. Better. You know that 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 when I read that eighty percent of people who have had assets taken did not get charged with the that's significant that's that's arbitrary. I mean that's what that is. You don't have numbers that high unless it's done on purpose. And again, what is the whole purpose of it? Because now we have more money, now we have more assets that we don't have to be responsible for. You know, so it, it's it's just it, it's arbitrary power that really doesn't benefit the community in any way whatsoever. I really can't think of any benefits of this other than, and two, who's to, oh, this is drug, so just take it. There's no yeah. there's no real protocol into proving that it's drug money. You, you can just say that it is, so. Mm -hmm. And also you end up putting people in a situation where it's like some people cannot necessarily use banks or maybe they don't feel comfortable using banks. And so some people like to operate in cash, but it essentially ends up punishing those people. And as you mentioned, that report, uh, that uh, study that was found that up to 80% of the people whose assets are seized aren't ever charged and it predominantly hits black and brown people. Uh, it just tells you that something shady is going on and it's definitely ingrained in the system. But let's go ahead and move on to our next story. Uh, now this one is very interesting when we come to having conversations about racism. It was during an appearance on C-SPAN, Washington's Journal. There was a Kansas man who identified himself only really as Gordon. Well, he complained about author Heather McGee's new book, The Sum of Us, When Racism Costs Everyone and, pros and How We Can Prosper Together. So listen to this caller, what he asked of Heather. Gordon, Kansas City Republican, you're up first, go ahead. Hi, thanks for taking my call, hi Heather. I'm so the opposite of you, and <laughs> I wonder if you get up in the morning and you have to uh, fight that white blood off, because it's trying to make you a racist. You have to fight that white blood off, and all this stuff that you're talking about was addressed in the 60s. Low-income housing was built. You guys got child care, anything. You've always got your hand out, and... I just think it's pitiful that you think you write a book and you know everything about every white person alive. Now, when I get up in the morning, I definitely do not wipe the white blood off. Uh, yeah, Jackson. Yeah, uh, my big thing about this is that, you know, this guy calls in and, you know, the whole thing about white blood and you got your hands out and, you know, just generally, obviously not understanding the plight of social welfare that helps people like him as well. It's not just about black people, it's not just about minorities. We know that white people overwhelmingly use uh, you know, welfare programs more than anybody else. But I, I just, you know, having to deal with stuff like that, um, I think that 
more than anything, for me at least, it shows that the Republican voting base is not going to change. And that all they really have in their arsenal is to continue to go with the same race baiting tactics to keep people like this going against um, you know, policies that actually impact people like him in communities like West Virginia that I live right next to. You know, dying cold, dying cold states where these types of programs and build back better actually help these individuals. So it's just funny to hear people say stuff like that because it's like you're really just talking about yourself and your own community. So yeah, and no, people don't get it. They like to do this us them dialogue, this thought of, oh, it was addressed in the 60s. Oh, the Civil Rights Act was passed. Things were magically fixed. Oh, you had integration. You have all the opportunities. Nothing's changed or everything's changed, uh, you know, other than you're complaining. It just, it shows you how much people are invested in these narratives that really do not in any way help advance us or actually really recognize what is going on and how a lot of these laws and you know these things that are passed that they're just farces. There's nothing really to them. There's no substantive impact. But you know, I wouldn't have responded to that question as well. But you know, the author <laughs> Heather McGee, she actually handled it pretty well. She did. Check out her, yeah, check out her response. I want to ask. Who is selling that story? Who's profiting from your average white American holding such negative views about their fellow American? Um, I am not at all saying, and I don't say in The Some of Us, that all white people are the same. Um, but I do ask that question of everything we believe comes from a story we've been told. So I want to know who's selling a story that white people are the contributors to society and black people are um, the takers of society. Who's selling ignorance about the great accomplishments of the black community and how many obstacles had to be overcome? Who's selling stereotypes uh, in cable news day in and day out? And how are they profiting from it? That's the question I ask in the book. Um, I, I hope against hope that you might uh, grab a copy from your local library um, and and read it or read just a, a chapter or two of it and and see if if the interpretation that you have of of what the message is um, stands up. Because I did write the book not just for people like me, not just for black and brown folks, um, but for all of us to stop uh, sort of criticizing each other and look more at the people who are profiting from a rigged economy. You know what, God bless her. That was such a smooth, professional, uh, respectable response that I know I wouldn't have had in me. But I know that she is the author and Heather McGee's specialty is really in the American economy and the mystery of why it so often fails the American public. And so this is a book that talks about the collapsing public infrastructure, racism, politics, policy making, how it has impacted us. And as you can see the cover here, the sum of us. It definitely seems like it's worthwhile to go ahead and get your hands on to check out because, hey, we need change and we have to understand the system and also how money in the economy, capitalism, truly has that impact on us. And it seemed that Heather McGee really, she had that down. Uh, Jackson, what are your thoughts? I think her response was brilliant. And I think that not only did she sell the book, but she actually really briefly and quickly painted the picture of what America is, who built, who actually built this country, who kicked their feet up while it was being built. And you know, how recent a lot of the stuff that you know he mentioned really is. My father's 70 years old, and when he was a kid, schools weren't segregated in many places. So you know, a lot of this stuff is is in fact still new. It's still going on, and we haven't gotten out of these issues. We're still living them today. So I think our response was brilliant. Yes, absolutely. And I do hope to get a copy of that book. And I want to thank you so much, Jackson, for joining us today. Where can the people find you? Yes, you can follow us at Politoscope app on Instagram and Twitter. We got some revamps coming up. We help you stay up to date with legislation. And so we're uh, excited to let you guys know what we got coming soon. But it's been great to be on here with you, Adrian. I hope we can host shows together more often. Yeah, that would definitely be very dope. In the meantime, we'll just keep holding it down on Rebel HQ so I can dig right. that too. All right. Awesome. Thanks so much.